Like many of you, I've made many career shifts so far, driven by doubts, questions, and dreams. From physics and school classrooms to engineering and industry, and then to organizational development of companies. All of this through different countries. To get a new job, to make career shifts, to adapt or readapt to a new work environment, we are required to excel in a variety of skills. Many of them are technical ones, like your knowledge of mechanical systems for car repairing. What about methods? The way you start, develop, and finish solving a problem is also important. For instance, are you good at working with people in a team? And what about yourself? How do you work on your own knowledge acquisition? Considering specifically our professional life essential for our subsistence, be aware of what the job market requires from us and how can we interact with it to succeed skillfully is a point not to be neglected. When we bring these thoughts to our present and extrapolate them to the future of work, it's not difficult to realize that we are experiencing the biggest shift ever in terms of skills requirements due to the integration of the physical and virtual worlds through advanced technologies supported by the internet. Motivated by these complex new work dynamics, I've been researching the qualification of the workforce, competence models, and strategies for improving firms' competitiveness through people qualification in the industry. Now, let's bring our thoughts to some more questions that I'm sure we got ourselves immersed in several times during our life. What does the market expect from me as an employee? What and how should I learn? What skills can I offer that differentiates me from others? These questions orbit around our skills in a supply-demand context between employees and employers. As an example, I invite you all to reflect on the duality between the skilled workforce and technology. Skilled people develop technology, which requires additional work skills to be operated and further developed. This makes up a loop of continuous improvement for both people and technology without limits in the future. Is it avoidable? I don't think so. To better understand this, let's think about our own history. Since the end of the 18th century, Specific scientific developments like the steam engine, mass production systems, automation, and more recently, connectivity, have been shaping not just industry, but also societies. These periods are named the four industrial revolutions. Each one of them posed and poses lots of challenges to employees in terms of skills at the workplace. To exemplify this evolution, I'm going to introduce you four employees who experienced or are experiencing these skill challenges throughout each of the industrial revolutions. In the end, we are going to pay special attention to the current fourth industrial revolution and perspectives about the future of jobs. Our first employee is James, who lives in the late 18th century. He's experiencing the re revolutionary invention of the steam engine that sets the ground for the first industrial revolution, paving the way to the transformation of agrarian societies in Europe and America into industrialized and urban ones. The small town James lives in is turning into a large city driven by the increasing number of factories. To get a job in one of these factories, predominantly textile ones, James needs to be able to work long hours, have physical strength, and perform repetitive manual work. James learns all the tasks on the job, assisted by other colleagues without any formal training. In summary, James primarily needs physical abilities to perform his work. Moving forward to the late 19th century, during the Second Industrial Revolution, our worker now is Henry. His social context comprises the expansion of cities' infrastructure, driven mainly by the automobile industry and advances in steel, chemicals, and electricity. Progresses in communication technologies, with the invention of the radio and the telegraph, supports the fast development of society. Within this scenario, the middle class experiences comfortable ascension, and the contingent of workers in city is increasing fast. Mass production dominates the work context and factories are becoming more standardized through the division of work. Henry, as an employee from one of the emerging factories, needs to perform repetitive tasks for long hours, have physical strength, and be able to operate specialized tools and assembly lines. He learns this very standardized skill set on the job and training programs are not part of his work life. Now we move into the late 20th century and Michael is an industry worker. Computers and electronics are starting to be part of society. Due to advances in telecommunications and transportation technologies, globalization is taking place fostering the integration of people, 
companies and governments worldwide. The key aspect of the industry is digital electronics. This results in the widespread use of computers in production line, automation of processes and communication and information technologies like the internet at the workplace. Michael's job position demands basic computer skills and technical ones. Physical strength is no longer an advantage, but he still copes with repetitive tasks. Besides, his learning process control and quality control of products, motivated by the increasingly competitive market. Michael has a better educational background, and at the same time, he learns through training programs in company. Qualification is obtained from classical methods like schools and educational institutions. With this framework, companies see employees as fundamental resources to gain competitive advantages in local or global markets. Now, we come to our present to analyze the fast-changing moment we are living. Connectivity is the word. The current technological revolution is altering the way we live, work, and relate to one another, and this transformation has a long life ahead. Technologies such as artificial intelligence, supported by a vast amount of data, our data, predict our behavior as customers and is able to suggest products and services based on our online search criteria or even voice messages. Practically speaking, this means the integration of the real and virtual worlds is shaping our society. This integration of real and virtual is also a reality in industry, businesses, and services. Consequently, it affects the professional world. In other words, job positions are each day more embedded in technology. Robots are our workmates, and many times decisions are taken autonomously, with no human participation supported by artificial intelligence. I know it sounds challenging, but at the same time, the current revolution can potentially raise income levels through the increasing of high-wage positions and improved life quality, as it provides better and safer work conditions. To put it into context, this time our employee is Marie, who works for an electronic components manufacturer. Her work environment is highly automated and also connected in real time with the internet. As the production runs 24 hours per day, Marie, in the morning, must analyze all the data from the previous night to better understand the efficiency of production, quality issues, and the current state of robots. It's important to mention that Marie can do it on her way to work, as all the information is available on her smartphone, which is connected with the production management system. Besides, she also forecasts the outcomes from her shift based on software predictions and data analysis. As the production line is highly automated, Marie has time to interact constantly with colleagues to look for improvement opportunities with creativity, to engage in solving quality issues, and to participate in training programs offered by the company. Talking specifically about training, she can engage herself in online, in company courses or educational institutions. It's important to mention that during Marie's hiring process, she was asked about her strategies to keep learning about technology and how fast she could learn regardless of the company support. Now, we can roughly summarize Marie's skill set. Basic technical knowledge of electronics, ability to analyze data and decision making, problem solving, ability to work in a team, motivation to learn, autonomy, among others. I would say Marie has pretty advanced work skills. When it comes to analyzing the current world of jobs, I have no doubt that we are talking about the era of knowledge. At the national level, promoting the education of people is essential, not only for the present, but also for the future, which is really hard to be predicted. Innovative people bring new ideas, create new values, respond flexibly to changes, not just at the industry level, but also in society. These skills required from people along history increase not just in number, but also in complexity. The simple and exhausting tasks performed in the past turned into interconnected, cooperative, digital, and autonomous ones. The role of human is in this context essential, but now, as never before, merged with the virtual world. Marie's routine is going to get more complex in the next years due to technological implementations. She must be aware of it, keep learning, and understand that the connectivity between humans and the virtual systems is part of her life. Now, thinking about ourselves and our work environment, are we aware that we first need to accept the interaction of digital and real worlds? 
and that it requires flexibility, adaptability, creativity, and continuous learning? To shape our future, we should continuously think about these questions, discuss them, and establish means of improvement at the governmental, company, and personal level. This is also our job.